Welcome to Central Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you, Peter Bostrom, for that prelude music. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter, Ascension Sunday, Memorial Day weekend, and we're in the midst of a series on creation care. And so it's very appropriate that we begin by singing a hymn whose lyrics date back 800 years to St. Francis of Assisi. Let us join our voices in praise. instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled, but to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. I'm David Shirey, Senior Minister of Central Christian Church, and I welcome you this morning to our worship wherever you may be worshiping from. 
As usual, we have 10 this morning leading worship to honor our social distancing requirements. Leading worship with me, Director of Music Michael Rintema, and our choir that includes this morning Jessica Bain, Ruthie Sangster, Jenny Shirey, Grant Holcomb, Will and D. Mason Walker, and Keith Dean, Colin Pilkington, and Pastor Elizabeth King will be joining us via video from home as will Noah Joyner, who will be sharing worship with us as reading scripture later this morning. Chris Teasdale, as always, is our sound and video technician. You can join me in looking forward to next Sunday's worship service on May 31 because our children and youth are preparing a program A musical of sorts, In the Beginning, God Created, is the title of their program. I understand we have 35 children and 13 youth who are participating. I'm not going to tell you how this is being put together, but just be assured it's all being done in the appropriate way from home and with appropriate distancing. Join me next Sunday as they present via video this wonderful presentation. As we turn to our prayer concerns, we want to hold in our prayers John Tackett, John Tackett Sr., who is hospitalized at St. Joe's. Mandy Isaacs has asked that we hold her mother in our prayers. Several of our members have been hospitalized but are now recovering at home. Pam Hammonds and Wayne Phillips and Chartorn Renfro. We hold Tony Hardy and Linda in our prayers as they go to Cleveland this week for Tony to uh, anticipate a medical procedure in the coming days. Gail and John Kennedy had their 50th wedding anniversary this weekend. We send our greetings out to them. And let me just celebrate and rejoice with all of our graduates from high school, Clay Fiscus and Noah Joyner and Andrew Lanham and Ray Surratt. All four of these young men have been participating in our worship over these weeks From University, Herman Bradsher and Catherine Rintema and Ruthie Sangster. And Pam Bridges got her master's degree in piano pedagogy. All of these are cause for celebration and for prayer as we come before God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we join our voices with the heavenly host. In John's revelation who say to you, O God, be praise and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Holy God, we know that love is stronger than death and your life-giving power has no end. And so on this Memorial Day weekend, O God, we, we commend to your care all who have died in the service of, of others. We pray that you would comfort and sustain all those who remember and who mourn. We pray that you would heal the wounded body, mind, and spirit. Pray that you would bring freedom and justice and dignity to to all people and bring an end to war throughout the earth so that everyone may know your promised peace through Jesus Christ the resurrection, and the life. Hasten the day, O God, prophesied of of old when they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks when we'll lay down our sword and shields down by the riverside and, and study war no more. Hear us as we pray, O God, for those who have been afflicted by COVID-19, especially for the 390-some who have died in Kentucky. We remember them. We pray for their loved ones. Even as we pray with thanksgiving for the 2,800-plus in this commonwealth who have recovered and those in that number who we know and love and prayed for and now give thanks with 
May your healing graces, O God, embrace all states and all nations. Continue to hear our prayer for the doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals who lay down their lives to soothe and heal those who are affected. Continue, O God, to grant public health officials and government leaders and church leaders the capacity to to act wisely and decisively, to speak with, with clarity and assurance and compassion. Bless scientists and medical researchers around the world with with insight and fortitude so that their work, O God, will yield an effective treatment and vaccine. We pray, O God, as we enter into this third month of separation for, for those who feel isolated or anxious or despairing or helpless, be a light that shines unfailingly in the darkness, we pray, and, and support and uphold the many, many people who know the financial hardship of this season. And God, raise up networks of, of support and generosity to see them through these days. All of this we ask in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hey guys, Colin here. So, as we all know, there are a couple of really important days in the life of the church. The first really big one is Christmas, the day that Jesus, will be represented by this little grape today, came down from heaven to live among men. We have Easter and Good Friday and Holy Week, the days where Jesus died and rose again. And then we come to a special day called the Day of Ascension, where Jesus went back up into heaven to be seated at God's right hand. Now, before Jesus ascended back up to heaven, he made a promise to his friends, the disciples, that he would come again, but in the meantime, while he was still up in heaven, he would send the Holy Spirit down to be among his disciples. So, if my little experiment works here, we'll get to see the little act of Jesus ascending to heaven. Look, and up he goes. Now, Jesus ascended into heaven, and a couple days later on the day of Pentecost, we learn how the Holy Spirit comes down, but we'll talk about that next week. For now, we celebrate Jesus' ascension and the promise that one day he will return back to earth. Hope you guys are having an absolutely awesome week, and I'll see you all later. This is a reading from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 28. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager, eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Five years ago today, May 24th, 2015, a landmark document was released. It was written by Pope Francis, titled Laudate Si, Praise Be to You, on our caring for our common home, a treatise on the care of creation. It's so fitting that a pope named after Francis of Assisi should write a piece, 100 pages plus, on the care of the earth because we know that St. Francis was one whose life embraced the care of creation. There have been numerous books written about Francis across the ages, dating all the way back to the, the mid-1200s when St. Bonaventure wrote the first biography of St. Francis, and in it, he bore witness to a man whose life was holistic and holy in its care for all creation. He founded, of course, an order called the Franciscans, whose coat of arms features a phrase, Deus meus et omnia, my God and all things, all things being all people, all creatures, and all creation. Francis lived a life that reached out to our God 
and to all things. All people, of course. Francis was born into privilege, and he was a soldier until he had a conversion experience. He took Jesus' words to the rich young ruler, literally. And so he sold all he had, and he gave it to the poor. He founded the order of the Franciscans, who themselves take a vow of poverty and vow to live lives that reach out to embrace the impoverished and the outcast. In Francis' day, among those who were impoverished and outcast were lepers. There was a colony of lepers about two miles outside of Assisi, and there's an iconic story about St. Francis embracing and kissing a leper. What's not told is what St. Francis acknowledged in his sort of autobiography called The Testament, when he said, before I became a Christian, the sight of a leper nauseated me. But God led me out into their company. And when I became acquainted with them, what had previously nauseated me became a lifelong source of physical and spiritual consolation for me. Francis' love for all people extended beyond the the lepers down the hill to, to Muslims far away. Now keep in mind, this was during the era of the Crusades, those 200 years or so when Christians and Muslims fought bloody battles over control of the Holy Land. And what Francis did was he made a decision that he would make a pilgrimage not to Jerusalem to fight, but to Egypt, where he hoped to have a conversation with the sultan. It was a dangerous journey, but Francis made it. And during his time with the sultan, it said that he introduced himself and strived to convert the sultan, but above all else to establish a relationship. He wasn't successful in converting the sultan, but he made an impression on the man. The sultan perceived in Francis a genuinely holy man. And so Francis earned the respect of the sultan, and that relationship had consequences that are far-reaching. Namely, long after Francis had died, and when the Crusades ended, and the Muslims took control of the Holy Land and Jerusalem, out of a memory and respect for Francis, the Franciscans were recognized by the Muslims as what are called the custodians of the Holy Land. And for 800 years, it's been the Franciscans who have been afforded a place in the Holy Land and in Jerusalem to oversee and take care of those holy sites in the midst of Muslim people you to recognize the breadth of, of Francis' love for, for all people and his living out the embrace of, of God's love that included outcast lepers down the hill as, as well as enemy Muslims overseas. Francis reached out to all people. Um, all animals, too, Our opening hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, sings Francis' care and love for for all animals. The biographies of Francis, you may know, are filled with all kinds of stories, little vignettes about Francis' encounter with animals. I suppose all of us have seen little statuary that have made out of St. Francis, you know, feeding the birds, made into sort of bird baths and whatnot. It's from a story, excuse me, a story that comes from when Francis was walking along a road with some of his companions and he looked up and saw a tree apparently filled with birds and he said to his companions, excuse me, I must go and preach to my sisters the birds. Now, I don't know what he preached to them, have no idea what passage he chose, but according to the story, after he got done preaching, 
The birds in Francis sang a hymn of praise together. Oh, there's another famous story. Maybe you've heard it about the Wolf of Gubbio, a little village in Italy that was uh, sort of terrorized by a wolf that lived out in the forest outside of the city that was described as, quote, terrifying and ferocious, who devoured people as well as animals. And as the story goes, St. Francis says, I'm going to go out and talk to that wolf. And so went out into the woods, try to talk some sense and some peace into that wolf, ended up walking him back into the city for a little reconciliation with the people. And as the story goes, for the rest of its life, the people fed the wolf and the wolf protected the people. It was Francis, interestingly enough, who made the very first nativity scene A live nativity scene with a simple straw-filled manger flanked by an ox and a donkey, animals. Apparently when, when Francis sang, Oh, come let us adore him, us meant people and animals, adoring and reverencing our common Savior. Jesus Christ. And so it is that on St. Francis' feast day, which is October 4th, that's my dad's birthday, many Christian traditions have a service called the Blessing of the Animals to honor St. Francis and his love for all creatures. He loved all people, all animals, and, and all creation. Pope Francis, in his encyclical, wrote, St. Francis faithful to Scripture, invites us to see nature as a magnificent book in which God speaks to us and grants us a glimpse of his infinite beauty and goodness. Through the greatness and beauty of creatures, one comes to know by analogy their maker. And so it was that in his renowned poem, Canticle of the Sun, from which all creatures of our God and King is derived, Francis gives thanks to God for what he calls Brother Sun, Sister Moon, Brother Wind, Sister Water, and Mother Earth. Mother Earth from Francis. Now, given his regard for all people and creatures and and all creation, it's no wonder that St. Francis is the patron saint of ecology, formally named so by John Paul II 30 years ago or so. I want you to consider that word with me for a moment. Ecology, prefix E-C-O, eco, suffix L-O-G-Y. Logi, literally words, really means study of, biology, study of life, zoology, study of animals, theology, study of God, ecology. That prefix eco comes from the Greek word oikos that literally means house. The study of the house? What house? The earth. Whose house? Our house, creatures, houses, God's house. Ecology is about the care of the house that God has made. There's another word that we all know that that begins with that prefix, eco. It's economy. Economy, that literally means the management of the house, the use of the resources that we have to take care of the house and the household. I want you to recognize that, that ecology and economy and economics are about the, the, the care and the management of the house, of all creation, And of all creatures, yes, economics is about GNP and profits and losses and 
all those kinds of things, but the big picture of the word economy is about managing the resources of the house for the welfare of the entire household. And ecology, ecology is about the care of, of God's house and all who live in it. St. Francis, the, the patron saint of ecology. And so when I talk about taking care of God's house, St. Francis had a vision early in life. He was in this sort of ramshackle little church at San Damiano when he heard the, the whisper of, of the Spirit say to him, Francis, Francis, go and repair my house, which is falling into ruins. Francis took it literally, went out and literally began to quarry stones and carry them and rebuild the little chapel of San Damiano that was falling apart. And then he got it and he understood that really what he was being called to do was to repair the church of Jesus Christ and to repair the, the call to which God calls all people, restoring the church to its intended purpose and power, that is to live the great commandment, to, to love God and love neighbor, to, to honor the, the great commission, making disciples, people who would Live out the great commandment, loving God and loving others and, and being God's trustees in care of the ecology and the economy of God's house. Repair my house. Noah read Paul's hearing that same call from God a millennium before the Spirit spoke it to Francis. Paul heard the cry of God's house in travail, aching for repair by God's people. The creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God in hope that it will be set free from its bondage to decay. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in travail until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves groaning inwardly while we await our redemption. Repair my house. Care for creation. Restore my church to the purpose and power for, for which I've called it the creation groaning in travail waiting for redemption. For Francis, who lived a millennium ago, the repairing of God's house and the redeeming of creation meant reaching out to, to lepers and Muslims and singing with birds and pacifying wolves and regarding the sun as brother and the moon as sister and the wind as brother and the water as Sister and the earth as mother. But that was Francis in his time. We live in 2020. And I remember somebody saying once, we don't have to die for our faith likely, but we do need to live for it. And so the question becomes, what does it mean for you to repair and to care for God's house in your sphere of influence. And how does your faith inform your relationship to the people and the animals and the land that are entrusted to your ecology and economy? Pope Francis enclosed his, closed his encyclical that was released five years ago today with a question. He asked, what kind of world do we want to leave to those who come after us, to children who are now growing up? What kind of world do we want to leave for our children? How fitting that our children and youth are going to close out this month of creation care next week with a, a program titled, In the Beginning, God Created. 
music and scripture and art and dance all done from their own homes and households or from a safe distance here at Central recorded and edited and pieced together and presented to us online next Sunday. Next Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. The Holy Spirit coming. The the children singing The Spirit interceding with us in size deeper than words in all that we do as we strive to to care for creation. Bring it on. Let all creatures of our God and King say, passage and the life of St. Francis, his almsgiving, his care of creation, and his prayers, I was reminded of a gift I was given. This cup was shared with me in recognition of a tradition of the oldest almshouse in England, Hospital of St. Cross. Since medieval times, a portion of bread and cup has been given to any who has come in need. This portion is called the Wayfarer's Dole, and it consists of a small horn cup of ale and a piece of bread. To this day, it is given to any who asks for it. The Wayfarer's Dole is an expression of the Lord's Table, where cup and bread are given to any who ask for it, and the Lord's portion is for all. Come to the table, and receive the Lord's bread of life and cup of salvation. Let us pray. Spirit who bears hope when we cannot, we praise you for the life you offer us in the risen Christ. Bless the bread that we partake today, and with it nourish us for the caring of your household. 
In the same way, let your cup of new covenant bring us to new life, a life of service and hope for your kingdom come in our midst. In eating this bread and drinking this cup, may we proclaim all creation freed from bondage to decay. In the name of your risen Son, Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples to share a meal. And as part of that meal, he took a loaf of bread. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus poured a cup and said, This is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's life, death, and resurrection until he comes. Let us pray. In the spirit of your resurrected Son, and in your mighty presence, transform us. Unfold us in your merciful love, and with this meal and all it symbolizes, empower us to extend such mercy and love to all creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. St. Francis understood God's call to almsgiving and service to all people, all creatures, and all creation, and he embraced it thoroughly. As we come to our time of offering, we have the opportunity to reflect on how we will embrace God's call, what we will offer to those who are in need, what wayfarers dole our houses and our church will provide to any and all who ask. What care we will offer all creatures of our God and King. This invitation to give is an invitation to reveal our hope in God. Let us bring our offerings.
resources you have bestowed on us, resources of funds and talents. Help us to live well our hope in you, our hope that all creation will be set free for your glory. 
use our offerings to provide for a world in need of reparation and healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now as we conclude this Memorial Day Sunday worship, let us sing of the beauty of spacious skies, amber waves of grain. Let's join our voices in a hymn of praise. see her standing up here, but Debbie Pierce joins the church this morning. Debbie contacted me about a week and a half ago, and she said, Pastor David, I don't want to wait until we get back. I want to join. I love a virtual altar call. Debbie, of course, and Scott and Audra and Vivian are regulars at our 830 service, about 12 pews back, center section, pulpit side. And I know they have a place this morning in their own home where they're worshiping with us. And now all four pierces a part of Central Christian Church. Debbie, welcome. And we look forward to the journey that lies before us. And now, one and all, go forth to love and serve the Lord. <laughs> 